coming to us from Matthew today. I find myself struggling with having a single strategy and actually having a plan with each point I go into in college. That sounds like a college player here. I feel like I'm just going out there without any intention or game plan. So something involving that would be great. All right, Matthew, perfect. Uh, I'm going to give you like a very specific, like exact game plan that you should have as a singles player specifically. This is so critical that you don't just go out there and wing it, which most tennis players are doing. And I just want to congratulate you for just being honest and coming forward with this question. Look at the, uh, the four you know, thumbs up here in a short period of time. A lot of people resonate with this. And that's because a lot of players are going out there without a plan. So the plan A I'm about to give you is based on geometry and margin for error. And this is why. This is data over a million points analyzed from a big thank you to Warren at tennisanalytics.net. What you're looking at here is a chart uh, for men and for women. They broke it into male, female. And from levels, NTRP 3.0 to 4.0, to national level juniors in the 12s, national level juniors in the 14s, 16s, 18s, NCAA competitors, and in professional players. And so you see the corresponding numbers here. This is the number of errors to winners. So at the 3.0, level, men and women are making more than four unforced errors for every winner that they hit. I'm sorry, let me, let me adjust that. Four, three -oh, four -oh players are making more than four errors. It's combining forced errors and unforced errors, just to be really clear, <clears throat> for every winner that they hit. If you're a national level junior, you're making between three and four. If you're up close to college age, you're making a little bit less than three errors per winner. If you're a college player, a little bit less than that. If you're a professional tennis player, between two and you know about two and a half or so errors for every winner that you hit. So the vast majority of points for tennis players of all levels, but especially normal tennis players, you know, like us, we're making four to five times more mistakes than we are hitting a winning shot. That's a shot that bounces twice without our opponent even getting to it or touching it. So for that reason, <clears throat> we have to be very conscious and cognizant of picking patterns that minimize our chances of making a mistake. That should kind of be the foundation of a, of a good strategy. So on the baseline, most of the time you should hit cross courts. I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly. There's a lot of coaching on this out there, but there's one thing I'm really gonna focus on. The net is lower when you hit cross courts. The court is longer when you hit cross courts. Timing is easier. We'll talk about this a little bit. I'm about to go to a strategy board when you hit cross court. Compared to receiving a cross court shot and then changing direction and going down the line, hitting the ball back where it came from is easier, all other things being equal. You run less. This is what we're going to talk about and look at when you hit cross courts. And you attempt, you tempt your opponent to break all of those things when you hit cross court a lot, meaning... If you stay on a cross-court pattern, let's say that the, the ball is traveling this direction a lot, back and forth, back and forth. Every time you, if, if this is you on this side, every time you send the ball back in this direction, your average tennis player is going to be very tempted to try this shot, especially after the second time, the third time, the fourth time you give them the opportunity. They're going to be kind of licking their chops at a certain point and just trying it because it's visually appealing. It's tactically appealing, like we kind of want that highlight shot. And so players are really tempted by it. So let's say we do hit a ball cross court and our opponent gets a forehand, the right-handed player on the other side. These green X's represent kind of the two far most targets that they could aim for. All the way <clears throat> down the line, as close to the line as possible, and a sharp ang angle that exits the court after it hits the courts. The reason why this third line is drawn is to represent the middle of those two potential shots that, that they could try. So when the ball is on the left side, you should be a little bit on the right side when you're on the baseline. So that means when you're receiving a ball on this side of the court and you're getting ready for a forehand, you basically have the option of saying, okay, I'm going to take this, this shot and hit it this direction, which means now where are you gonna to have to recover? If you hit the ball from here to here, now your recovery spot is on this red X, 
instead of the first one. So in effect, you're doubling the amount of running you have to do immediately following that shot. That's huge, it's really significant. So based on your decision, if you hit the ball here, you half the amount of running. If you hit the ball here, you double the amount of running. So over the span of an entire tennis match, this is really, really significant. And so it's not just geometry. When you hit this way, you've got more room for error over the net. You have more room for error inside the baseline, but you also minimize the amount of work that you have to do. And when you hit cross court a lot and you tempt your opponent to hit down the line, now you're tempting them to make that bad decision. And when they do make it, now you have the opportunity to run them twice as much because of that decision that they made. Now, when you're at the net, it flips. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. A lot of, most people don't understand this. It flips completely. When you're at the net, it's the opposite. When you keep the ball in front of you, instead of hitting at a diagonal, you have more time to respond. And I'll show you why in a second. You hit yourself into position instead of out of position. You run less and you give your opponent smaller targets to aim for when you keep the ball in front of you, when you're at the net, when you're already at the net. So let me show you why. <clears throat> Part of the reason why I drew this middle line is to illustrate something. Let's say that instead of being at the baseline, we're at the net. And so you approach and come up to the net and put yourself right in the center of the net because you know you wanna cover that cross court passing shot, but you also wanna cover that down the line passing shot. So look at these, look at these angles, look at, that, look, look at the yellow lines. Is this person actually in the center of the possible passing shots from the other person? Look at how much space is available in this direction to hit past that net player versus how much space is available this way to hit past the net person. The net person's in the middle, but the middle's not actually the middle anymore. Look at how this line traces and eventually crosses over the middle of the court, and now it's on the same side of the court as the ball. So here's a, a really good rule of thumb. When you're at the net in singles, you should be on the same side of the court as the ball. And the further over the ball is, the further over you should be to account for this spread of angles. It flips on the baseline because of how this geometry works. All the way back at the baseline, you wanna be on the other side of the court. So on the baseline, you should be opposite on the right side of the court when the ball is on the left. And at the net, you should be on the left side of the court when the ball is on the left. So that's why everything is flipped. If you receive a volley here, and you angle it over there, well, where do I need to get to next? Before my opponent hits that next passing shot, I need to get all the way over to this side of the court. And because you're at the net, your amount of time to respond is really, really low. So if you hit this volley and you can't get all the way over here before your opponent gets to the ball, well, you just left an easy target, you made more running for yourself, and so your job, being a good tennis player, becomes dramatically more complicated and more difficult. Here's, the, here's your plan A for every match. This is, this is your mindset and this is your strategy and your, your playbook every time you begin a singles match. From the baseline, based on everything we just talked about, hit the ball cross court unless you have a good reason to hit down the line. So a good reason might be, well, my opponent's best shot is cross court. So every time I get a forehand and I hit them a forehand, they just hit a winner. Okay, that's a good reason to avoid that big strength. Or maybe they're really out of position and so they're leaving a huge chunk of court open down the line. Okay, good reason to go down the line. Maybe you're receiving a short ball and you're going to be approaching or attacking. That can be a really good reason to go down the line but there has to be a good reason. <laughs> Otherwise, remember that, that big list of things? Otherwise, all of these things are working against you. So there has to be a good enough reason to counteract all of these things, and then you can go down the line. And a lot of times it's there, but most of the time it's not. Most of the time you should be hitting cross court. So that's from the baseline. And at the net, based on everything we just talked about, keep the ball in front of you unless you have a good reason to hit away from yourself, AKA cross court. So if you're receiving a low volley 
or let's say an approach shot, you haven't made your way all the way up to the net yet in an attacking position. If you don't have an offensive attacking opportunity, then you should keep the ball on the same side of the court that you're on. Otherwise, all of those challenging factors are coming into play. Uh, so Matthew, hopefully that makes sense. Um, hopefully this really kind of simplifies things for you and uh, really gives you a starting point you know, for all your matches from here on out.